say, Romans chapter 11, which is a remnant saved by grace. We'll also look at what is termed the wild olive tree. Um, there's also exhortation to holiness. Um, and we'll just get a sense of who Israel really is. Of course, there are different interpretations, but tonight um, we'll be uh, talking principally um, from the perspective of what is called remnant theology, uh, which we've spoken of uh, at you know studies past. So if you're not entirely sure what that is, um, you can always look back at previous thrilling episodes. <laughs> now, um, we've got 32, 36 verses, and I'm just going to go and say, let's read it all. Yep. Let's just read it all. Get it in context. Wow. Let's not chop it up. Let's really get a, the breadth of tonight. And so, Paul, would you read all those verses for us, please? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not that the scripture saith of Elijah, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have, di they have killed thy prophets, and digged down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled, that they should fall? God forbid, but rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, insomuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. On them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted, 
contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my commandment, sorry, this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. But as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counsellor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. Lovely. Thanks so much. <coughs> well read. Okay, so there's the entire chapter before us. And just to set the scene, it's important at this stage to remember, uh, as we've learned uh, throughout chapters 9 and 10, Paul speaks of Israel, but he often speaks of Israel in two senses. One, the ethnic nation, but then he also refers to the remnant Israel. These are not the same. There is a distinction with a difference. And it's important when you come to exegete scripture to be very careful about getting the context and an understanding of what this Israel represents in this particular verse. Because if we say it's a one size fits all Israel, uh, we frankly won't. I don't think get the, the right understanding on, on Paul's argumentation. So we launch in at verse 1 of chapter 11 and he says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? There we have the ethnic Jews, the people of God. Has he cast them all away? He says, God forbid. He says, for I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of, Je of Benjamin. He identifies it with himself as <clears throat> part of that uh, Israel that um, uh, God is well pleased with. Now I think that ties in nicely with chapter 9 verse, um, uh, verse 6 um, where it says, Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. And do you remember we learned that ethnic Israel was a nation of millions, but it was only a relative handful, I can't give you the exact number, that came to faith in Jesus Christ. And it is that Israel that is saved. It is that remnant Israel uh, that have come by the way of faith. And I find throughout the Old Testament this same pattern uh, time and uh, uh, again. Uh, I just wanted to refer to this list here where Israel was chosen at Sinai but a remnant was preserved after the sin with the golden calf. Caleb and Joshua, the only of, the gen of that generation, desert generation, to enter into the promised land, the rest um, were cast away. The, that's the only remnant that went that went in. The, the, their generation w were lost because they didn't believe as they should have. Elijah, well, the argument is made 
before us in chapter 11, Elijah was saying to God, I mean, who's left? Who is left? Um, all the rest of Israel, they've gone astray, he says. Verse 3, Lord, they've killed the prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, <clears throat> and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? What did God reply to him? He said, I've reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Out of that great crowd, that multitude of Israelites, there was a remnant, in this case 7,000 men, who had remained faithful. And so in verse 5 he says, Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Okay, and I believe that remnant is the Israel that's referred to in chapter 9, verse 6. The Israel that is not of all Israel. Uh, that is not, sorry, the same as all Israel. They are not all Israel which are of Israel. The identifying mark of those is that they have come to the cross. They have come to the Lord Jesus Christ by way of faith. Let's, let's read on. And if by grace, then it is to no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Paul is recalling what he said many times over in Romans, and that is you have to come by faith, uh, oh, sorry, by grace, through faith, okay? And that is the way those Israelites back in the day also were approved of God because they had faith. It wasn't because they had been circumcised. It wasn't because uh, they were ethnically Jewish alone, but it was because they were trusting in God. And Paul ably argues that throughout uh, Romans, but particularly, I think, in chapter 4, where he refers to Abraham, who prior to even being circumcised, without the law, he says he was justified. Why? Because faith was counted unto him for righteousness, not because he was ethnically superior. So verse 7, what's happened? What has happened to ethnic Israel? He, he says, what then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And this is echoing Jesus' words, is it not? To the Pharisees, to those scribes, to those leaders who ought to have known better, and yet they could not see the salvation of God, Jesus. It means, does it not, the name means salvation of Jehovah, right in front of them, with eyes they couldn't see, with ears they couldn't hear, blinded. And as we learned in an earlier chapter, this is part of what's called the hardening. Now, don't misunderstand, as I've said before, that God suddenly decides, I'm just going to harden you. I'm going to make you into some callous creature who is insensitive to any of my pleadings. Uh, I cast you away according to my um, uh, fickleness. That is not God. God doesn't arbitrarily make decisions like that. What we find, as with Noah, and, and Paul argues, that, as with Pharaoh, as Paul argues, given chances plague sent but what happens each time Pharaoh refuses one more chance refuse another chance refuse another chance what do you think is happening free will is happening the person is saying no 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 okay 
There's only so many times that you can offer somebody a gift before you think, I'm not going to bother with this anymore. You clearly don't want it. And so they're hardened. You'll have what you want. I'll hand you over to it. Romans chapter 1, of course, talks about that, doesn't it? About the nations being handed over to some disgraceful appetites. Okay, so uh, let's read on. Um, and David, verse 9, saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, how, sorry, have they stumbled? that they should fall, God forbid, but rather through their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now as we read on, let us not misunderstand that God is totally hardening these people so that there ain't no chance of a single ethnic Jew of ever coming to Christ. We know that's not the case because there are plenty of Messianic um, Jews who have, uh, have believed and to this day are believing. You know, there are ministries out there for them. There are places of worship tailored to meet um, their sort of Hebraic roots. That's absolutely uh, f fine. And that is the grace of God, that those Jews um, have seen the light. So they've not been, you know, so blinded that they cannot choose Jesus Christ. But corporately, the nation, it's not the way forward now. The way forward, well, let's, let's uh, just, just uh, re re read on. Now... If the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, if by any means I might provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. So, in other words, a little bit confusing as we read, maybe, but here we have the Gentiles. Now they're coming in. All right. That was God's plan all along. God said, by means of whom? Your seed. All nations of the world shall be blessed. Okay. God's plan from the beginning wasn't just for a select number. The Jews. A particular ethnic uh, um, tribe to be saved. No, his, 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 his plan was that all mankind have that opportunity. But along the way he used Israel to the point at which Jesus appeared and fulfilled the promises. Now unfortunately they've <laughs> re rejected him. And now as they look on and see these Gentiles coming in and, and having the blessings of the Lord upon them, of being blessed with those promises that were given initially to uh, ethnic Israel, what's happening? Well, hopefully, what Paul says, I'm pro uh, God is provoking them to jealousy. So their fall, as he says, the fall of the nation, that is the ethnic nation, has meant the rise of the Gentiles being added to that remnant, that hopefully they might be provoked to emulation to emulate yes verse 15 for if the casting away of them so if for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead still hope you see <coughs> life from the dead for some who <coughs> by grace <coughs> begin to see that the Messiah came. 
and then he was there in 33 it happened that Jesus is the coming Messiah the one that they're looking for they need not wait for another Messiah he's been and then they can receive life from the dead because currently as with all mankind they are spiritually dead be under no illusion they do not have spiritual life and this is Paul's um, argument in verse 15 that they also need that resurrection life but then we might, we might think oh well it, it, you know is this now all about the Gentiles no verse uh, 16 for if the first fruit be holy the lump is also holy and if the root be holy so are the branches don't forget it started with Israel and the believers of that uh, those first few believers of that um, um, first century group were Jews we said before the twelve apostles which one of them was a Gentile none of them they were all Jews were they not they were all Jews when you consider the authors or the, rather the writers of the Christian you know scriptures the New Testament again who, who are these people they're Jews they're the remnant they're the believers when you read the when, when you read Acts okay halfway through three quarters way we're finding that the message is going out now to the Gentiles but that burgeoning that initial uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, uh, mass, you know mass conversion in some cases of thousands who are converting the Jews okay the remnant the Israel of God so um, that first fruit that lump is holy that olive tree uh, and its branches no problem they're Jews But verse 17, if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. In other words, don't forget your place, Gentile because you've been grafted in don't boast about it somehow the Jews are over and now it's all about the Gentiles no the wild olive tree Israel is still of God but sadly many branches have been broken off because they have not accepted Jesus Christ is their Lord and Saviour. And in their place, in their stead, we have the Gentiles who are partaking of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Those blessings that were promised of Israel. Now they partake of them because they're grafted in. Have you ever grafted in a branch into uh, well, in this case, a wild olive, uh, sorry, an olive tree, cultivated olive tree. I did this at school. It was quite amazing to graft. You know, you use a little uh, Stanley knife and you cut a, a sort of sliver away. It's like a, almost like a triangle. And then you uh, take a branch from another tree and you cut it and slide it in. And then we bound it. And in time, it grew into the plant and became part of it and that's what that's what Paul's arguing here it's, it, 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 you know it, it, there has been a remnant of Israel which he refers to as Israel not ethnic Israel but he calls this 
remnant of believers, Israel. And he says, that Israel, which is the cultivated olive tree, now also grafted into that Israel, to become also part of that Israel, are spiritual Jews. Do you remember how we looked at uh, who was a Jew? Is it about circumcision? No, it's on the inside. A Jew is on the inside. Circumcision of the heart, not just flesh. So, carrying on, uh, motoring on, we read um, 19, that will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. So there's the Gentile getting a bit proud, a little bit full of himself. I've been grafted in. Uh, this is, the promises have gone over now. Jews, forget it. It's about the Gentiles. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, in other words, God has locked these <laughs> branches off, these Jews, and yes, you've been grafted in, but don't get too full of yourself, don't be high-minded, because take heed, lest he also spare not thee. He could do the same to you as he's done to the Jews. Verse 22, Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity upon the Jews, cast away, if they've not come by faith, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Notice, if thou continue in his goodness. So we have this wonderful privilege of being grafted in, of being part of remnant Israel, of inheriting the promises of being joint heirs with Christ. And yet, don't think that you're there for good. Sit back, yeah, on your lounger, pina colada, I'm okay. No. We have to continue in his goodness, do we not? Otherwise, we may also be cut off. There's faith, and we come by faith, but there's also faithfulness. Um, and the latter, holiness, is also a requisite. And it can be done by grace. Not by works, obviously. The works can be worked out. But again, we need Jesus. We need Jesus 24-7. That's how this works. Continuing in his goodness, that we might work out goodness. 20, verse 23. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in for God is able to graft them in again. Bit of a hokey-cokey going on, in, out, in, out. Mm -hmm. uh, but there we have it. They can be grafted in again. Fantastic. And so there, there are those, I've mentioned ministries tailored towards uh, helping the Jews in their unbelief. And many of them have been successful in planting and uh, uh, setting up uh, those uh, messianic um, fellowships. Verse 24, For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft, graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be graft into their own olive tree? And how true that is. Have you ever encountered the likes of Helen Shapira? Mm. Yes. Wonderful testimony. Wonderful to encounter a woman who is Jewish and she just realised it all makes sense. Her Jewishness 
runs right the way through all of this. It, total, it makes total sense that Jesus is the fulfillment, that, she, that he is her Messiah, that ethnically, as a Jew, what she was looking for was accomplished in Christ. And some of those people become the best exponents of the gospel. Verse 25, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. <coughs> and so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Verse 25, if we're not too careful, if we start going with the, the way of our, our verses are, are carved, uh, that's a, this is a 15th century thing, or thereabouts. Anyway, we didn't have them in the original scrolls. Uh, we didn't have pagination as we do here. But what we find if we read it together in context is that there is this partial blindness, the fullness of the Gentiles come in, and so all Israel shall be saved. Not, and this is where we need to, need to be careful about making an interpolation into this, and say, oh, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, and then it goes back to the Jews. And then it goes back to ethnic Israel. It doesn't say that. It's the next sentence says, and so all Israel shall be saved. How? By what has just happened previously, which is that there is a partial blindness, and then the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And thus, all Israel shall be saved. Verse 27, for this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without <coughs> repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. So God has allowed this to happen so that his original promise should happen, which is that by that nation, by Israel, all nations will be blessed. There is this partial hardening for good reason. And so now he turns his attention to the Gentiles also. But let's not say that he's cast off entirely every single Jew, because they're still the hope of, of, of them coming to faith also as individuals. We're getting mercy here through their unbelief. And we're being added, grafted in to Israel. And, this, and in that way, all Israel will be saved. Verse 31. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. How interesting that Israel was a light to the nations and now we, as Gentiles, must preach the gospel to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Let's not imagine that we have no obligation towards the Jew. Of course we do. Verse 32, for God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Everyone is called to repent everywhere. God is not partial. Verse 33, oh the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Yes, Paul, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counsellor? This has thrown a curveball to the Jews. Who hath known the mind of the Lord? 
It's taken a great man of huge intellect, called by the Spirit of God, inspired to explain these things to us tonight. That's not me, by the way, I'm talking about Paul. <laughs> not me at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> verse 35, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory for ever. Amen.